What is up guys? Welcome to another Ableton tutorial. Today we are going to cover <coughs> Wavetable, which is a wave shaper synth that has come out I think in the last maybe two, two versions of Ableton Live. Uh, last time we covered Sampler. We took a really in-depth look into Sampler. If you haven't watched any of the videos before this one, I would suggest going back to the beginning where we did Simpler, Sampler, and it'll give you an idea of what the different components are inside of the different instruments in Ableton Live. There's a lot of cross uh, referencing be between all the different instruments, so you'll see similar things in all, all of them, which <clears throat> will help you understand better about what to do with the synth, the capabilities of it, and then also the possibilities. So let's get started. I love red peppers, they're my favorite. All right, so here we are with the wave table. To start out in very simple terms, there's this little triangle right here, and this allows you to expand the wave table into a full view. So you can see the oscillators, you can see all the different um, envelopes, one, two, three, the amp envelopes, LFOs right here, uh, the two different oscillators. So it's basically a whole view of what the synth is, which is really great if you're trying to do many things at once. So you can see what is interacting with what and you're not just tweaking things and then you don't know what's happening or where that weird sound is coming from. Okay, let's go into the different components. So you'll see right here that over on the left hand side, you have a sub. Okay. You can choose which octave and what type of tone. So as you move the tone dial, it gives you a different type of tone if you want a little bit more. So you can pick the octave that you want. You can also transpose it, depending on where you want the sub. Next is <clears throat> the wave shaper window. So you'll see right here that this actual synth has a huge library of weight tables, um, basic sounds, basic shapes. So feel free to go through all these different uh, collections or presets and you'll see so many different types of of wave tables that it's just you can get so many sounds out of it which is really cool for experimenting so let's stick to the basics for now right here on the left hand side you can see the volume of the actual wave center left or right so for panning on the right hand side you can see the different shapes so it goes all the way from a sine wave up to that square wave. You have two different views here. You have the wave view, and then this is a like a position table, but it actually shows you. They, they use this a lot. Uh, their polarity pattern, uh, polarity patterns. They use this for the way that microphones pick up sound. So. It's a really good cool way, it's a very visually engaging. So once you have the basic shapes, you can choose from what the basics are. So you can choose a harmonic series and kind of toggle up and down depending on what sound you're looking for. You can do a quad saw if you want, it's something really oh. Super cool, the possibilities on this one are amazing. And we move on to the bottom. This is something I uh, I actually was fiddling around with. So you can do FM synthesis, regular pulse modulation. You can actually sync it to the tempo that you're doing. Uh, you want to do frequency modulation. You get some really crazy metallic sounds. But yeah, you can choose the, the tuning, which it, it tunes to 
the actual key that you're hitting. And then the amount. So if you want a lot or a little, then how high do you want the modulation to happen at? And then you can detune by scents. Uh, there's three different sounds. So you have like the classic. <clears throat> then you have the FM. And then you have the modern. So they're just pretty much different flavors that you can use. Second oscillator works the same. Turn it on. Boom, you're ready to roll. Let's move on to this middle section. So this middle section, super interesting because on top of having two different filters, you can run them in serial, par parallel, or split. So it took me a while to understand this because I'm like, wait, how does this work? So the serial basically runs one filter right after the other. Parallel, it runs them uh, one beside the other. And then there's this split one, which I'll read the, the actual configuration description here in Ableton. The split routes oscillator one to filter one and oscillator two to filter two. And the sub is split in half and sent to both filters. So this, this split filter gives you this really kind of interesting sound because on top of having low and high it, split the, it splits the signal in kind of a interesting way so that's something to mess around with so going back to the filters we'll go back to serial This is something that we covered in some of my earlier tutorials. So in most of the filter sections in all of Ableton's instruments, you always have the option to choose what type of filter to, to use. So there's like the MS2 from the Korg, there's a, there's a Moog filter, and this is, there's this Oscar fil uh, filter, which is from uh, a British type of filter. And all of these filters have a drive knob, which really makes the sound a lot more gritty, which I think is super useful when you want to get a little bit more volume out of your sounds and make it more in your face. So mess around with this. You can do the same with both of the filters. You can choose either 12 or 24. You can choose the type of filter, high pass, low pass, band pass, bell. You can kind of do this, this morph one. Now to the modulation sources. So this is the same thing as all of these right here. And basically you have five different things that you can do modulation with. So this is the amp, amp envelope. And you have this other envelope, which is not really routed to anything right now. Then you have another one, then LFO one and LFO two. So if we were to use, let's say, our envelope two in the matrix to control filter frequency, we would just go right here into the matrix. You see how it moves there? So now we can go back to the source. get this stabby uh, perk sound. You can do the same with the third envelope and then the LFO. You can also route those to, for example, let's say pitch. So you can get some really interesting kind of wobbly sounds. Depending on what you want, you can choose different types of waves. To use the oscillator as a as a modulation source, so you can choose the type of wave. You can also choose the time the LFO takes um, time to act. You can either do it in hertz or in an actual rate, so it's synced. So if you want A for sixteen four. So this is a really good creative tool. And then same deal with the LFO two. 
you can choose a whole different thing and you can choose to do something different with it. So it could be... So the possibilities with these are endless, which is, I think, something that's really cool about uh, just matrices in general, that you can, you can tweak so many parameters and come up with interesting sounds. I haven't much messed around too much with this. I usually use the matrix if I want to get something uh, modulated within the, <clears throat> the wavetable synth. Last is the section that's all the way here to the right, which is volume. You can choose polyphony or mono. Uh, the mono gives you this glide or legato control, which you can choose to, which is basically the time it takes to transition from one note to the other. So that's really what the glide is for. So you can hear it. And the polyphony, you can choose how many, how much the polyphony is, whether two, three, four, you can choose all the way up to eight. Then here's the types of unisons. So the unison, if, depending on which one you pick, it gives you a different type of flavor. So for example, there's the classic, then you have the shimmer. It seems to be a little bit more towards like the high, high mids. Then you have the noise one. It has this like noise towards the end. Phaser type of effect. Position spread. Yeah, this one kind of, I guess it, it spreads it a little bit. And then just random. You can choose how many voices you want. And then the amount, this is basically that kind of like a global unison D2. So, so if I choose like something like the classic. You can hear what it's doing there. So depending on the amount, it gives you the uh, more unison effect or less. And that is pretty much it, guys. This is a, a super simple overview of what Wavetable can do. It's very versatile. <clears throat> it's very versatile. And you know, if you really want to mess around with all the different parameters, I would suggest doing one at a time to see. How, it, how it's affecting the signal so that you don't get uh, bogged down into doing so many things at once that you'll, you'll kind of get lost and it'll be an endless tweaking session, which could be good, but if you really want to learn what each parameter does, it's good to take an approach of sequence to see what is happening at each stage as you're tweaking either an envelope or an LFO or the different wavetables. So that's just a quick tip of, of how I like to go about it and how to find out what the capabilities of the actual synth are. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. Let me know what you would like to learn about in the future or if you have any other questions, I am happy to make more videos and engage in a conversation where we can learn more from each other. So take care, have a good week, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Jay Morales Music, out.